It's November 28th, 2023. I'm in Savannah, Georgia. I'm at Mohawk Lake. And this is where you can find the, it's either two or three or four American persimmon trees. Well, hold on, let me back up. Let's look up here at the tree line. So you can see there's three layers here in the front with these red leaves. This is winged or shining sumac. This is also edible, but this has red leaflets and then clusters of berries at the top. People use that to make a, I guess they call it sumac aid like lemonade, but made with sumac berries instead of lemonade. And then behind that, we can still see the green leaves. That is a young black cherry. I don't think this one has flowered yet. They're also edible. They're just a lot smaller than the cherries you find in the store because they're wild instead of being domesticated for thousands of years. And then the third layer in between the uh, trees on either side, we see a tree that has lost all of its leaves. But if you look down, you can still see some round orange fruits hanging on up there. And these are the persimmons. Last time I was here, this giant branch had fallen down, so I stuck it here. This is the path, and there's a the giant branch. I stuck that there, so try and get more people's attention so they'd notice it. Don't think I've been successful so far, but you can walk back here. And this little skinny thing here, this is the sumac. This one right here is the black cherry, and below it here, this is sparkleberry or farkleberry, but most people don't like that name because it sounds gross. So this is sparkleberry, it's a kind of blueberry, also edible. And then here, and here's the telephone pole as a very handy landmark, so you know you're at the right spot. Right here is the persimmons, the first persimmon tree. It's got two trunks that are split down at the bottom. It's, it would probably take more than two of my hand lengths to wrap around it. It's got this deeply, well, sort of deeply furrowed, cracky bark. It's kind of got red on the inside. I'm not sure if that'll show up on the camera. And then there's a little steep hill, and if you are very careful, because there's green briar that has thorns on it, you can climb back here. And there's the fence. And then if you look up, you can see the other two, well, or two or three. I don't know, these could technically all be the exact same tree that has just got multiple trunks, because there's one there that's split into two, and then another one right there. I'll even walk over here and show you. This one's a little bit smaller than the first one down there, but not by much. So that's split into two. And then there's that one, and the trunk is very obviously like curving. And then it goes up and it splits into two, and then goes up. And look at all the fruits still up there. And then the, this one that splits into two here splits into like three and then it splits into four and then it just keeps going. But all of these spots where the trunks emerge, whether they're multiple individuals or not, they all still have fruit on them. But most of it has fallen down. And if you look at the ground here, well, this is a good spot, obviously. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. And you can see the caps, the distinctive persimmon cap. Looks like a four leaf clover. And then here's one that's starting to get dehydrated. Here's another cap. And these are the seeds. And you can just pick these up off the ground because the fruit rots away if nothing eats it first. And you can plant these and 
this would have some seeds in it probably. Yeah, it's dehydrated. But look at that nice seed. It just came out of there. Yeah, a lot of these fruits actually just get dehydrated. Yeah, just dried on the ground back here if they don't get eaten by something first. So those two are mostly dehydrated. Here's another seed. And there's a seed just perfectly landed on this leaf. There's another one there. So yeah, this is the world's easiest way to collect persimmon seeds. Because you can come here like any time after the fruit has fallen and just play uh, spot the seed. <laughs> I'm just gonna break that off. Now I will take these dehydrated ones and toss them down the hill or you know, I'll just stick them in my pocket. I don't care, I have to wash these pants anyways. And yep, here is another seed. Right here, and here. And then I'm just gonna walk this way a little bit with my stick here. So I saw something on the ground. Might have just been a leaf. <laughs> I think it might have been like... Okay, yeah, it was a leaf. I was hoping there was maybe another tree hidden behind all the invasive ones because there's a lot of Chinese tallow trees, which is also called the popcorn tree because the seeds literally look like a tree that is covered in popcorn. It's really funny. But they were brought over as the name of... Ooh. Here's a fruit. Look at this little one. Oh, it's still, oh, that's still attached to the twig. That's awesome. Don't fall off right. So here's the twig. But it's still attached to you. That's nice. So now you can see, I'm, I'm kind of shocked at how skinny this twig is. I guess there's a reason it fell off. So that's what the twigs look like. Here's this little fruit. I would not eat this fruit yet. It's not squishy ripe, so if I tried to eat it now, it'd be astringent. So we're just gonna keep that for later. Break the rest of the twig off. It can go in my shirt pocket. And here we have two more fruits, dehydrated. And they just turn hollow because the caps come off. This can also go in my pocket. Here's two more seeds. And if you're wondering, what is it gonna do with all those seeds? Well, the answer is if you come and visit Savannah, Georgia in 10 years and there's persimmon trees everywhere, you're welcome. Cause I'm just planting them. They won't, they will not grow here, which is why I'm collecting all the seeds because over there is a military base that, oh, here's another fruit. Yeah, on the other side of this fence is the military base that just wraps, if you've been to Savannah, it's, you know which one it is. It's the thing that's just wrapping around the whole city and cutting through and being obnoxious. But I guess it was here first, so whatever. But the military base is over there. And I think it's like, they just come through here at least once a year to cut stuff down in this pathways for safety purposes. Like you don't want to get stuff caught on fire or I guess just visibility. What was I saying? Oh yeah. The seeds won't be allowed to grow here because they chop all this stuff down and there's just a lot of competition. And if they fall on that side, the grass gets mowed like every spring just in time to decapitate any seedlings that started to grow. And I have seen like eight or 10 seedlings that have clearly been trying to grow for years. 
but just keep getting decapitated in the spring. Here's a seed that's got a little hole drilled in it. I'm not sure what does that, but that's interesting. I'll put that on a naturalist and see if anybody knows. Here's two more dehydrated fruits. May or may not have seeds in them. But I'll just take them back down with me and squish them on the sidewalk under my shoe. Yep, and now we can go back down. And if you come here, you just have to be careful because there's this green briar vine here. Can't really tell right now, but it does have thorns. And I keep trying to trim it back and convince it to grow another direction, but it doesn't really want to. And here is another seed. You see it? Just sitting perfectly in that little sunbeam, like a little angel, angelic choir. But if you come here in October, when most of the fruits are starting to ripen and falling without all of them being gone like it is now, you can just look around down here in the grass, like from here, that way a little bit, to over this way, you can find the persimmons. You can try on windy days, and then at any point, between October and the next October, you can, or at least before they uh, do their spring cleaning. Oh, see, here's the fruit. Next to some Mexican, wow, I just forgot what those are called. Mexican clovers, I'm having a brain fart. Look at this fruit. Let's hold it up to the sun, maybe. Yeah, look at that color. And this will taste delicious once it gets rinsed off. I brought egg cartons with me to put any fruit in that I found. Sit there. So we got two so far. You can also use a pizza box so that all the Fruits are in a single layer and not squishing each other. Now there's lots of leaves on the ground. And just for the heck of it, I'll just show you. This here, this one, is from the black cherry tree because you see the little teeth on the edges. Those are called serrations. It's like a sawtooth. Black cherries have serrated leaves. Let's see if we can find a persimmon leaf. The wind might be blowing them all back the other way. There's also a lot of oak leaves. This is one of these evergreen oaks that might be... Oh, a duh, duh, it's right here in front of me. Here's this oak. And what's this one's bark look like? Here's where this one's coming from. It's going all the way out there. Pretty sure this one's evergreen. Anyway, oh, here is a persimmon leaf. And a little tiny cap to go with it. And the fruit, and yep, see? Here's the, here's where the leaf was. Here's a dehydrated fruit. Might not have seeds in this one because it's kind of falling apart. You go in my pocket anyways. There's the cap. Right here. Do you see the seeds? Right here. There we go. This one's got another hole drilled in it, so I, I really want to know what's doing that. Because that's interesting. And then up here, next to this little root, dead stick, we have another seed. And this is stuck in my camera. Stuck in a dehydrated thing, so we can just squish it and it falls right out. And then this is just perfectly ready for planting right now. Now let's see. Here's another one. Right here. Oh, and <laughs> the seeds are all falling out. I wanted to pick it up entirely. Oh, let's carry it down to the sidewalk. 
Here's another fruit that was up there that got squished. Okay, these seeds are absolutely not playable. These ones are paper thin. And yeah, so these ones probably would not grow. Cause look at that. There's that seed. I'm sorry, camera. I'm dropping my poor camera. Let me get a good seed out to show you a comparison. Bad seed, good seed. And the good, the, they will all dry up eventually if you're storing them. So they'll get this, the texture kind of looks like it has reflective gold. They'll get like that, but they shouldn't be absolutely paper thin even when they're dried. Like this one will eventually shrivel up a little bit and stop being so smooth and shiny, but it will stay bigger than paper thin. And I'm not going to go over there now because I don't feel like it. But if you go that way, there's a path. Let me see if I can zoom in. I think it's mostly a deer path, but people also use it that leads back there. And that leads to a road and is possibly lacking a sidewalk on the other side. But there's a spot down there where there's a ton of persimmon trees that I don't actually know if they can fruit or not because I found them all in the spring and then they all got cut down. But uh, since this fruit is already so sad, we'll just, I'll show you the insides. The delicious, delicious insides that I'm not going to eat because it was already smushed open like this. We'll see if there's any seeds. Yep, there's one. And they have a water fountain here, which is the only reason I'm sticking my hands in here. Here's one seed. I'll get that clean in a second. Let's see if there's another one. Yes, there is. And see, each seed is covered in a little sack of flesh. And all you have to do to clean them, usually with fruit less squishy than this, it's kind of hard to demonstrate with one hand, but you just push your thumbnail against it like that and then push upward and the sack will come off and it'll leave the fruit completely clean. It's not really working for this one because the fruit got all smushed up beforehand. But they should be this kind of consistency when they're edible. My hand's all dirty now. But they'll be like the as squishy as a water balloon. You do not want to eat these when they're firm because they will be astringent as heck, which means they'll taste bad and they'll dry your mouth out. There's a sort of a myth that you have to wait until the first frost to eat them. And that's that has nothing to do with the frost, like the cold affecting it. It's just, you can't just go out and eat them before they're ripe. It's to make you be more patient and wait until the proper time. It has nothing to do with the cold itself. You can actually get them when they're just slightly underripe and just let them sit on your counter for a few days. Or just put them in with something. Look at that. I'm sorry. It's just delicious. I'm not eating that though. <laughs> Obviously. So then we can just go and rinse these off in the water fountain down here. And then when I get home, I will make a video showing you how to start them from seed. AKA just how to put them in a plant pot because that's all you have to do. I had brought some buckeyes with me, native red buckeyes, to plant, but I don't really think there's any shady enough spots here. Plus I only have my wooden spoon to dig in the dirt because I don't know where my shovel went. But anyways, that's it. Bye-bye.